If you're a new PC gamer, welcome to PC gaming. Miners are mining, scalpers are scalping, and you're just sitting here trying to get the same piece of equipment you've been trying to get for months. Welcome. Here's seven things that all new PC gamers should know. Hey guys, it's Chris with Tech5. Today we're gonna to be going over seven things that all new PC gamers should know. Now, maybe you've been in the space a while and even if you have, you may actually learn something on this list. So stick around if you're interested. Let's get into it. Now, the first thing we're gonna actually talk about is FPS or frames per second. If you're not familiar with what this is, this is basically just how smooth your game's gonna actually run. Now, a good target to shoot for is going to be anything 60 plus. Now, it depends on what kind of game you're actually playing and what kind of monitor you're actually playing on. That would really determine where you need to really be or where the best place is to be in a PC gaming scenario. Now, if you are playing a more competitive first person shooter game, you're gonna really benefit for the more higher frames per second. Say anything over 100 FPS is where you're gonna really get some benefit there. If you're just playing a regular story game, 60 frames per second is going to be great. It's going to play smooth. You're going to have a good time. So just keep that in mind. Don't think you have to have this 200 FPS to have a great experience because you don't. But let's talk about how to actually increase your FPS in a game. How you actually go about this is launching the game that you're actually wanting to play, and you would go into the in-game settings. My suggestion here is fairly easy to increase your FPS. All you've gotta do, go to your settings. To make sure that the game looks as good as it possibly can, make sure you turn your filtering textures up to high or ultra, whatever you feel like your PC can actually handle, and then we'll work it down from there. Once we've got those on high, we're going to go to things like anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, and shadows, and ray tracing if you do have a card that actually works with ray tracing. Consider turning those down and off, kind of working through those and notching them down little by little until you get the desired frames per second. Now, if this doesn't actually work, you may want to consider actually reducing the resolution of your monitor. Now, for example, if you happen to have a 1440p monitor, you may want to consider dropping the resolution down to a 1080p resolution. Now, this should definitely increase the performance of your GPU, and it should definitely release some of the strain, which should in turn give you a little boost or a significant boost in FPS. Now, if this doesn't seem to work as well, you may want to consider dropping some resolution even further to the point that you can't stand it anymore. At that point, you may want to just get some different hardware. Sorry to say. Now, you may be wondering, how do I even see my FPS? How do I know what kind of FPS I'm even getting? Well, there's a couple different ways to do this. Some games and some launchers actually have settings where you can turn on FPS counters and it'll display them when you're in the game. But that's not the one I wanna show you today. I actually use MSI Afterburner for this. I've done a video over this. This is an overclocking software and I go over this and show you how to actually display different information on your screen when you're in a game that kind of looks like this. If you wanna check that out, you're more than welcome to. Pause the video, check it out, come back, or after it will be in the end screen and you can watch it and definitely get it set up if you'd like to do that. But this is going to be very paramount into this next bit of information I'm gonna share with you. Because one other thing that you need to know as a PC gamer when you're wanting to upgrade or trying to figure out why you can't get the performance or desired results on your PC is finding out what your bottleneck actually is. Well, this information here with this FPS counter and this MSI afterburner that I speak about can actually give you that information. When you're in a game and you have this running, you can see what your highest utilization is, whether that be your GPU or your CPU. Whatever one is sitting at 100% to 99% is going to be your bottleneck. So that will tell you which piece of hardware you actually need to upgrade next. This is a simple way to tell you what part in your PC is the bottleneck. So here's a lifesaver for you. Maybe you've been playing a game and for whatever reason, your PC decides to freeze up on you. You can't get it to change the picture. You can't get it to close the game. You can't get your screen to do anything but show you whatever it is that's on your screen where it froze at. It's pretty annoying, isn't it? 
Well, one thing that you can actually do to prevent this from happening next time is follow this step here. Hit Control Alt Delete, bring up the Task Manager. Once it's up, you can just simply go to the Options tab and check mark Always on Top. So next time your game decides to freeze, your computer decides to freeze up, you can simply bring up the Task Manager and it will actually show in front of the frozen game. Then you can end the task and go about your day and reopen the game, I guess, without having to restart the computer. It's just a little thing, but you know, it can make a big difference because it can be frustrating. I know, trust me. So with the show of hands in the comments, how many of you guys are actually playing on a high refresh rate monitor? Or at least you think you are. You may actually not know this, but for whatever reason, some monitors actually reduce the refresh rate of the monitor automatically when you boot up and you think you're playing in 144, but you're really playing in 120. Here's a good way to tell and make sure that you're actually playing in the right refresh rate that you think you are playing in. Now you can just simply go to the desktop, right click on your mouse. It should bring up the display settings. You'll click that. You'll scroll down till you get to the advanced display settings. Then you'll go down to properties for that particular monitor. Then you should be able to click the monitor tab. And from there, click the down and drop button and make sure you're getting the max refresh rate out of your monitor, or at least the refresh rate that you're wanting to get. I know, don't be embarrassed. I didn't figure this one out for, few years into my PC endeavors. It's okay. Now, another thing you may have actually experienced and don't actually know how to fix is really loud fans. Maybe you bought a PC or you built a PC and you turned it on and your fans are just loud all the time, whether you're running a game or not, it's just always loud. I'm gonna show you how you can actually reduce this and maybe save your ears a little bit. Now you can just go ahead and open up your internet browser, whichever one it is you use. I hope it's not Internet Explorer. And then you go and head and Google your manufacturer for your motherboard. Now from here, you should be able to find some support download, some software for your particular motherboard. You will download that software. And from here, you should be able to set different profiles for every fan that's actually hooked up to your motherboard. Now you can create custom curves here, but that's kind of up to you to decide, but just make sure you're getting the proper amount of cooling when you do have your PC under load. Now you may have noticed game files are getting much, much larger. Game worlds are getting bigger, graphics are getting better, and it's just taking up much more storage than it used to on your PC. Now, if you're one of those people that have gotten a budget build PC and it didn't come with much storage, or you built your own PC and you didn't put much storage in it, and you're tired of only having two games on your PC at one time, and you're thinking about upgrading, but you don't know which one to go with, I'm gonna try to help you out here. You've got three different options to choose from. Now, your first option is going to be an HDD drive. This is going to be your cheapest option, but it's also going to be the slowest option. I personally do not recommend this game if you're going to be putting games on it, it makes your load times definitely um, unbearable, at least by today's standards of gaming. Take World of Warcraft, for example. You got your World of Warcraft on one of these things, trying to go to a major city and you think you're gonna beat your buddy to the portal before and get there and load in and do something and beat him in the race to wherever it is that you're going across the lake and you think it's gonna happen. I'm just gonna tell you it's not gonna happen because you're gonna be waiting there for four minutes trying to beat him in your load screen. He's like, where you at? You're not showing up. You'll never get there because because you're in that loading screen, it's gonna take about 10 minutes. Anyways, I digress. So for your second option, this is going to be an SSD. This is gonna be a good middle ground for your storage options. It's gonna be slightly more expensive, but it is going to be faster. I would recommend that you actually check the description to see what read and write speeds you're actually getting with a particular SSD that you're interested in because they are not all the same, they are not all equal. Samsung typically has a really good read and write speed, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive out of the SSDs as well. What I would suggest actually getting is going to be the third option, and that's going to be an SSD slash M.2. I think these are great. These are the fastest ones there are, but they are the most expensive that there are. But just understand that they're fast, they're quick, they're zoomers. Dalaran, two seconds, flat. 
So guys, that's gonna do it for the seven things you should know as a new PC gamer. If you found the video helpful, please give it a like. Just know that it does definitely help me continue to grow as a YouTube creator, and it tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job and people would like to see this. So if you don't mind, help me get my content out there and help me continue to grow please give it a like. If you know somebody that's not so tech savvy, please consider sharing this video with them. We do our best to keep everything as simple as possible on this channel. I try to not throw out too much technical jargon so everyone can understand what's going on and I like to try to keep it simple for everyone. So with that said, I hope you can like, I hope you can subscribe. And if not, well, I hope to catch you in another one. And remember, it's a vibe, a tech vibe, specifically. We'll see you.